But uh, that's what I love to do. I love hearing uh, advisor stories and how they've supported businesses, individuals, families, and in return, it supports communities, townships, cities, and, and our country. So thanks to you guys for being who you are. Okay, so uh, fift, uh, 15 years ago, we developed this program called MasterPoint, and it's specifically designed for advisors. So it's all about creating original and compelling brands for advisors. And the foundation in it is to really get to know your story, what you're all about. And the personal coach, what we do is customize one-on-one -on -one business coaching for financial advisors and their, and their teams right across Canada. Uh, so we help them in the critical areas of growing their business. And, and the result of that is to really build their confidence, their focus and uh, work freedom. <clears throat> so if you are running a business and you're defining yourself as a pro and who you are, uh, you're the person with a high degree of knowledge and skill in your profession. You are the expert, the whiz, the master, the specialist, the maestro, the connoisseur. So if you are a pro advisor, you want to make sure that you are covering these 15 areas of your business, strategy, team excellence, value proposition, marketing, branding, contact management, advisor skills, maximizing resources, personal effectiveness, leadership, financials, succession planning, regulatory risk management, business acquisitions and technology. Yeah, if you can cover all those efficiently, you will have a very, very successful business. But today we are going to focus on branding. So to, to your brand creates a powerful first impression to attract more clients, ideal clients, set yourself apart from the competition, create client loyalty, empower your clients to introduce more clients, motivate your team to be on brand, have a great culture, and enhance your marketing focus. So here's the question, what is branding? So in order to define what branding is we need to define what it is not. It is not a logo. It is not a product. It is not a promise. So then what the heck is it? So I know a lot of people, they do relate to branding as a logo, but then they go, no, it's really not a logo. I know a lot of advisors are starting to understand that. But the problem is nobody's really defined clearly what a brand is. So I did a bunch of research and this is what I think branding is. A brand is in a person's gut feeling about a product, a service, or organization. It is in their heads and in their hearts. Okay, now that might be hard to remember, but just remember a brand is your reputation. Uh, so I got this quote from uh, Marty Numier, uh, an amazing brand expert, very well known, inspired Steve Jobs and many others. He's got some great books out there as well. Uh, but after, I, I'm, a, I'm a brand junkie and reading a lot of stuff, this is what I define it as, is a brand is your reputation. If you don't brand, you will blend into a very crowded marketplace. You will look like everybody else, which is very common in this, uh, the financial services industry. Uh, sometimes it's not your fault. Sometimes it's dealer driven or it's just fear, but it's, it's very common to do that. Not just in the financial industry, it happens in other industries as well. Your brand is not what you say it is, it's what they say it is, what your clients say it is, okay? So it's really important that you brand because if you don't, your clients are gonna make up who they think you are. So you wanna be in control of what your message is and your value and what you deliver, what your promises and what your culture is. So six strategies, pro financial advisors like yourself implement and what should you implement too? The first thing you wanna do before you do anything is develop your compelling story. You need to know what your story is. And again, like myself, for me to define it myself was very difficult. You sometimes need that outside source. It's interesting that Kelly and I had a call with an advisor interested in branding at one o'clock today uh, out in British Columbia, we're in Ontario. And uh, he just said, I'm good at what I do, but I know nothing about marketing or branding. That's what I'm coming to you guys for. And so our job is to uncover what, what his story is. But I do want to give you some tips today, especially if you, if you are starting in the business, you need to start somewhere. So 
uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna try to give you some tips today to help you develop your story to a, a certain extent. The other is to really ask for client feedback. And there's some tricks around doing that. Uh, and you do wanna, if you can, if you have ideal clients, you wanna ask them only. You wanna find people that have similar values to you. They're very like-minded and you wanna get their feedback. And also people that you know, could potentially uh, refer you, introduce you to other like-minded people as well. But you wanna know how, would, how do they describe you? you know, what, how did they describe your business if it was a person? Uh, those are the key things. It's interesting because most uh, most people will not refer you by the success you're giving them, but the type of person you are. So that's really, really important. You develop a unique company name. Now, I know some of you can't do that because of your dealer, but if you have a great compelling story, that will that will definitely do it for you. But if you can, it's really interesting. It's good to come up with a, 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 a very interesting name for your company. Then you want to create a logo, a slogan, and a uh, descriptor. And then you want to define what that personality is your business. Once you get all that feedback from your clients and everything, you can, you can start uh, developing that, per that business personality. And we're going to do an exercise later on to help you do that so you can implement right away. And then you want to communicate that across all of your touch points. So what the heck is a touch point? Well, it's actually everything that you do. So we know a website is a touch point because people see it and they read it. And they're stimulated by words and visuals and colors. Uh, your voicemail of what people hear. A touch point could be the smell of the office. Okay, so there's, you wanna make sure that all the areas are, are, are covered and that you're focusing on the touch points that work and you don't wanna do the ones that don't work and, you're, and waste your money on. Okay, uh, six stages will help you make a powerful first impression and engage prospects to work with you. So let's talk about developing your story. So the power is shifted from the business to the client. Clients are not interested in your services only. They do not want to be sold to. They want meaning. They want to know how will you support their life and their identity. In today's world, it's all about identity. What can I do to make me look good? You know, what kind of bow tie am I going to wear? What kind of car am I going to drive? You may, you may not know that, but it's really about supporting your identity and, and your life, your fulfilling life. How do you make your life more fulfilling and look and feel good when you're doing it? And as an advisor, you want to support those people on supporting their identity. Uh, so one, one thing too, is that we're in an environment where we don't want to push people with sales. We want them, we want to pull people in. Uh, and this before the internet, it was push, push, push this. And there wasn't a lot of competition. Here's my product that I made and I'm telling you what it's all about. And I'm just going to keep pushing it on you today. That's extremely annoying to people today. What you want to do is educate. That is really key. Just keep educating people and position yourself as the pro and the expert. And then once they see what you can do and the, uh, the things that you can provide, then they'll make the decision that you're the right person. For some businesses, it can take up to six months before they actually see results. But you want to educate, educate, educate. And in that education, you want to provide some meaning in there. You don't want to keep selling people and pushing people. You want to avoid using we and I up front. You want to talk about what are the things that's going to make their life better in all of your content and in your storytelling. That's where you should always start first with your storytelling. The reason why is in a story is really upfront talk about what's happening in someone's world. What are the pain points? What do they want their world to look like? And then how are you going to support them? Because 80% of decision making is emotional. When you buy that car, when you buy that house at the end, it's always very emotional at the end when you make that final decision. So you really want to speak to people's emotions. Don't ignore it. We tend to get into the rational when we explain things. I will help you with this and this and this and this because that's what you do. But you're not addressing their decision-making process. Clients want to belong to something, a group, a community of like-minded people, no matter what that is, whether it's on the golf course or in a church or a temple or in a mosque, 
uh, a karate club, uh, a mountain bike group, whatever it is, people just want to belong to something. It's just part of our human nature. And so I call this tribal client loyalty. And so that's what you want to do is create this loyalty with your clients. And you do that with your story and the type of words and language that you create that is specific to the personality of your, of your business. So the more you can do that, the more loyal your clients will be. And if they hear a different story somewhere else, or if they're just hearing what everybody else is saying, it's not going to feel right to them. Okay, so it's really important that you build that, that tribe through your story. So the compelling story itself. People have been telling stories for centuries. Stories are memorable. Stories get the point across. Stories speak to our emotions. Think about it. You know, you're telling a joke, a really good joke will just spread and get told and again and again and again. Or maybe it's that grandfather or that uh, great aunt that's uh, at a family get together and who's known for a great storyteller. Even though she's telling, he or she's telling the same story over and over again, you just say, everybody, let's be quiet. She's starting to talk. Uh, so, you know, you want to be, have a story that's extremely engaging and extremely uh, compelling because it'll just get told and told over again. And it's a great source for getting introductions and referrals if you have a great story. When you're creating a story, when we're working with clients on, on creating a story, what we're doing is looking for those gold nuggets. So it can come from anywhere. Uh, it could be something from your past. It could be something about your community. It could be something about your ideal client. It may have something to do with the river that's behind your office uh, or a landmark. We don't know, but you want to explore all of those things that gives you the opportunity to build a story. Even if it's like a, li a little river going behind your place, your office, you can create all kinds of an analogies and people thrive to analogies. And you as an advisor, many of you are, are pros at this where you'll explain something and then the client's like, okay, I kind of get it. And then you bring in an analogy and, and then, they, then they understand it. And your story is the analogy. So from a brand perspective, there's three chemicals that actually are happening in the brain. This is why it works. We've got dopamine, which is about love and pleasure. Uh, oxytocin, which is about trust and empathy. Uh, the endorphins, which is about well-being and creativity. So in your story, if you tell a great story, you actually hit these. Now think about it. Some of you like to read novels or watch movies. That's exactly what they're doing to you. So in the beginning, of the story, the novel or the movie, they're giving you a taste of what the whole story is going to in, in case. And so they, they give you a little bit of that and then they start introducing some of the characters like yourselves. And in our case, for uh, being an advisor, you do wanna to speak to uh, the viewer's pain points and uh, what they need are and what their vision is. And some stories are very good at that speaking to an audience about what's happening in their life or similarities or things that they've seen. And then you will have characters like the Yoda, uh, the person that gives advice, and that is who you are. And then you have some of the heroes and some of the heroes are, I would say, are your clients. You don't wanna make yourself the hero, the clients are the heroes. They're the ones that are providing for their family and so forth in their business. And then in, in this story, you have a climax, you know, where the, the great thing happens and then it has a happy ending. The idea of the story is that it allows people to see what they're gonna get from the beginning all the way to the end, even before it's happened. It puts in their mind, it's like, yes, that story fits with the type of life that, that I want. I think one of the greatest stories uh, told, and it's very sharp and to the point, is uh, Martin Luther King. So think about it. You know, back in 1963, he actually had a lot of competition, but he was able to tell this amazing story about a dream. So he told this story and then 250,000 people showed up to his rally two weeks later. And this is before social media. So my point is, you can do podcasts, videos, website, education articles. If you don't have a good story, it's actually useless. 
And if your marketing isn't working, because that does happen, it's because you don't have a good story behind it. That is the foundation for your brand is to always start with a really, really good story. So here's one of our clients. Uh, well, that's not, that's actually a door. That's not a, an actual advisor. Uh, this is a, an advisor out of Stratford, Ontario. And when I first met with him and did his discovery, uh, he said, uh, my uh, client, ideal client are uh, business owners, and this is what I'd like for my brand and so forth. And then by the, by the end of the meeting, which was four hours later, he said, you know what? I, my clients are family, and my, my team is like family. We've got the junior advisors. We've got the admin. We've got kind of like a grandfather, grandmother uh, people in their positions, and we, we argue and we have fun. We're a, we're a family. And I said, okay, well, what are some of your obstacles? He goes, well, we're in this, this uh, very kind of traditional old house, our office, but people, prospects can never find it. They would just drive by. This is before uh, COVID when clients would come to the office. So I said, okay, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rip out your front door and we're gonna put in this 18th century door and uh, we're gonna paint it bright blue and put an 18th century door handle on it. And we are gonna have a slogan uh, enter and begin, which works well on the website. And the descriptor is the place to achieve wealth and security for your family. So we're going to describe what you do and who you do it for. Let's give it real clear right up front. They didn't want to change the name because it had an impact. Uh, it's been there in Stratford for a very long time. He purchased a, a business off of another advisor. And so they wanted to keep the name, which was great. But now we've got a story to tell that's all based on this door. So all of his marketing and everything is based on the door. And so what would happen is that now it became a landmark within Stratford. And uh, then he had an open house for families and I actually went and helped out and did uh, caricatures and drew all these kids and everything to help them out. But uh, it's, here's the thing, it's really launched the business. Their sales, they saw their sales almost double in, in, in a year. And we've done that with, if you do this too, you'll see it happen, but we've done that with other advisors within two years they become like the top in Canada. Of course, they are their uh, business savvy and they're and they're working on all elements of their business, but they've got a really good brand behind them. Okay, so I'm going to have here an advisor share a story with you. So I've got this two minute video. Some of you may know him. This is Joe Moffat. His company is called Blue Whale. He's out of Moose Jaw. Uh, and he is going to tell you his story. Oh, hang on. Let me see if I can find that button without hitting the other button. You have a very interesting name for your company, uh, Blue Whale Financial Solutions. Mm -hmm. Tell us the story. And tell us uh, how I, you came up with that particular deal. I think everybody's somewhat either, either read it or heard it or something along the past. If you haven't, I'll give you the long version. The, um, <laughs> The, the short version was I was, you know, I was raised in a family. My father passed away young. He was a uh, business owner. And um, my, my parents' belief of financial planning was if the mortgage was paid off, they'd be financially free. So they were successful in paying off their mortgage, but they were far from financially free. So at a young age, uh, 11, I had older uh, sisters and very traditional family. You're the man of the house. Now you've got to step up and provide. So I started a lawn mowing company called Mower for Less. And a buddy of mine had a paper route. So when he delivered his paper routes, I went around prospecting for lawns. And um, it ended up just by chance. It's the only thing that I knew, um, only thing I knew how to do. <laughs> so anyways, the, um, the mowing company is still good. Uh, they're still functioning. They're a client of ours today. I think they've got 30 staff. I sold it when I was 16 years of age. Um, and went and played semi-pro soccer. So the story of the Blue Whale is uh, every Friday after we would collect our pay, I'd, I'd uh, buy candy. Stop at the store and buy yourself a bag of Blue Whale candies. Okay. Um, cool. So Blue Whale candy, at, uh, is anybody familiar with the Blue Whale candy? Yeah. Okay, cool. They're the so best candies ever. <laughs> We freeze them and they've actually pulled them and we still have the direct wholesale rights to them. So we can still get them for the eternity of time. We can get our blue whale candies. So it is, yeah, it's, you know, it's tough to talk, but that's what we do, right? 
but it's, uh, yeah. That's what's, what started. Yeah, so tell me about the brand or tell everyone about and the you brand. Guys, I, and how you guys, how you came up with that. Everything well, that's a, but that's a toad for you guys to pull that out because when we went through that branding process that you did, and it was your process uh, that pulled that out because they, they come in there and they interrogate your staff. It's vicious and terrible. Yeah, vicious. And then they, and then they come in and they, and then they interrogate you. It's like an auditor and they interrogate your, they interrogate your clients. But in the process, I'd never told that story. So your process work. Is it good? But it was. The question was, what was your first memory of money? Yeah. And that's the story that you told. Right. So the company's now called Blue Well Financial, and your tagline Which I shit my pants when you came with me with that proposal. <laughs> I know. So this they is come out of the blue and say, oh, we think you should comp name your company Blue Hill Financial. I said, you're up shit creek. I said, I'm in the prairies. <laughs> There's no water anywhere around here. Yeah. Nobody's going to understand a candy and a sob story of a poor kid. Like, nobody's going to do that. Well, it's it resonates incredibly well today with our clients, and so I'm I'm very grateful and thank you for the process because and it does, you know, the brand resonates well for us, uh, for myself specifically, I, you know, everybody speaks to their own connection with the brand, but for myself, I work exclusively today in the business owner market and the majority of these business owners have, they've been through the same mud puddle or something quite similar. Um, all of us have had trials and tribulations in our life. It's not nothing unique, um, but acknowledging it, and then building enterprises from it is exactly what our clients do. And so I don't know what all of your clients work from, but that's usually where the majority of our clients, they start talking about uh, welding for their uncle or their dad or whatever the case is. Now they got a welding company or manufacturing facility, or they started off truck and grain on the farm and now they got a logistics company and, and so on and so forth. And they, and they've all got a story, something similar. So when we start to tell the story, it was incredible to hear all of a sudden our clients started sharing their stories. And so then that's where the, whole brand came around and say, well, what's your blue whale story? And let's, let us help you build your something big. So what's your something big and let us just be a part of it and tell us what your blue whale story is. And it's a, and it's a great opportunity and clients, once they listen to ours and they, and it's almost like once you can make yourself vulnerable, then, then they can make themselves vulnerable. And all of a sudden your financial planning can be a heck of a lot more intimate and focused. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. Um, with Joe, we did his branding, uh, I think about uh, eight years ago now. And uh, because of how things have changed with COVID and with uh, technology, we're doing a brand update. So we want to take it to the next level. But here's a, a you could tell he's a very authentic and genuine uh, individual, like many of you. And um, uh, Within two years, uh, he became like one of the top uh, in, uh, in Canada within uh, the Sun Life organization, which is a great, great dealership. So um, anyway, yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you just to give you some insight on, you know, the impact that it has. So asking your clients for feedback is, is, uh, is critical. Uh, the more you can learn about what your clients value, the better uh, they can, you can service their needs. You'll become an expert to help them. You will see your referrals climb because you have your focus. You'll find commonalities amongst responses that will help you define your compelling story. You'll have a deeper understanding of your value. Your ideal client profile will become even more refined. You'll be able to maximize some cross-selling. You'll make well-informed brand and marketing decisions. And you can uh, build a unique process and, and name it. Now, there's you've probably seen many processes out there. You know, they start off with, uh, you know, let's meet. Uh, let's uh, look at your objectives and goals. Let's build your plan. Uh, let's implement your plan and then monitor it. Okay, those are kind of the common ones. but it's if you've got a brand in place and you've got a theme for your brand, let's say like Blue Whale or some of these other ones we're going to show you, you, you can then develop your own language and come up with a name for your process that's on brand as well. The process itself may not be that much different, but it's going to come across as bearing very unique to, uh, to your business and how you help people. 
because again, it's all about emotions. So there's a direct correlation between clients being asked for feedback and uh, giving referrals and introductions. So here's an example of a process. This is a client out of St. John's, Newfoundland. Uh, we did his branding uh, this year and uh, we called his uh, company Live By, kind of play on, uh, on the Newfoundland dialect a little bit. And uh, so we created this whole, his brand all based on, on his uh, doing this whole journey thing, uh, having a better way of living. And so it starts off with understand, create, launch and navigate. And uh, you can see that it has a very fresh, open uh, kind of feel. And you can see there is his ideal client in there as well. So developing a unique company name, if you're in a position to do that, if you're not in a position to do that, you may want to think about creating a program that you can add an interesting name. It's kind of like the same thing. So that's something that you can work your way around. But if whether it's a program name or a company name, you want to start off with a theme first uh, that will support your story. And sometimes I think it's, this is kind of a weird phrase, is to be really unreasonable. If you think about successful business individuals, they are always unreasonable. They try not to play it safe. So an unreasonable, it, it, maybe that's not the, the, the right word, but uh, you know, people will give you all kinds of advice, but really when it gets down to it, you're going to do what you feel is right and what your gut is telling you. And people may tell you that sounds unreasonable, even in a company name, but you really need to work down from what your gut is, is, is telling you. And if, if that company name represents who you are and challenges you a little bit and differentiates you, you want to follow that. You want to really follow that. So you want to make the name very interesting and imaginative. Uh, company names is not an easy thing to do. I know we've got a, we a client uh, in here that's with us today. I think we've come up with about 140 names, uh, but it can be difficult to do. When you are coming up with a name, you want to have your checklist. So you want to check with your dealer first if uh, uh, you are affiliated with a, a, a specific dealer, just to make sure that the name is acceptable by them and maybe they don't have another advisor under them somewhere else in, in Canada. Uh, contact your lawyer for availability, very important. Uh, something that we've noticed recently is sometimes uh, these names are trademark under an, somebody in the financial industry, maybe it's a program or a product that they have, and you won't see it online, but it's there if you, uh, if you search it. So you wanna also check for trademarks to see if that name is taken. If you decide to do business outside of the province, make sure that the name isn't already in use in that province. So let's say you are in uh, uh, Saska Saskatchewan. Uh, if you're just doing business in Saskatchewan and there's another company name in Ontario that has the same name, you can still use that name. But if you plan to do business in Ontario, uh, then that, that's, that, won't, that won't work. So you wanna think about the future if you are gonna be expanding out of the province or not. Uh, and the name also shouldn't offend anybody in any other language. So you may want to do a check on that too, just, just to make sure. You don't want to find that out afterwards. So uh, when to use your name versus a company name? Well, compliance restrictions. Uh, you are the only advisor, okay? You're just a sole uh, business owner. Uh, clients want that personal connection or you are the, and you are the go-to contact. So for example, uh, we did this brand uh, this year for a company called Whitehead Beckett. Uh, They're in a rural area in Ontario. So we interviewed some of their clients. We came up with some really interesting names for their firm that they, the advisor really liked, but their clients are saying, no, we do not want a company name. We wanna to relate to you as a person. So there are advantages to having using your name. So what we did is we really played on the brand with what their, uh, how they operate and what they're about. It's about plan, plan, perform and live. One of the advisors on the team is a professional fiddle player, uh, Canadian champion as a matter of fact. And so we're kind of playing on the whole performance thing and we're actually gonna have them hold some events once COVID is over, some outdoor uh, events in some of their communities. And you can see too that the logo is very simple. 
We didn't want to do anything fancy. It's something that would look really good on a farm hat. So when to use a company name versus your name. Uh, when you want to take a team approach. When you want to free up your time so you can delegate to other team members. When you want to really stand out. And also, if you ever want to sell your business in the future, you could add a few dollar zeros to, to that if you've got a really good uh, company name that has a great brand behind it. So creating your logo, slogan, and a descriptor, that would be the next stage. So here's something interesting um, after doing some research. Today, your logo, name, and company, and colors and shapes have a bigger impact than your value proposition. So here's my question to you. How many value propositions have you really read or paid attention to? Okay, these days, you want your, your logo, your slogan, and your descriptor to sum up what you're all about. If you're all about enthusiasm and freshness, then you know what kind of colors you're gonna use and what kind of shapes you can use, uh, what the company name might sound and sound like, or what it's gonna say. Uh, and that's what people are gonna be attracted to and want them to read more. So it's really important that you have a very strong, powerful corporate identity. Slogan and a descriptor. Uh, we've heard of the term elevator pitch. Basically, your slogan and descriptor is like a mini elevator pitch or an introduction. And so you want to make sure that you have both of those. Most companies only have one or the other. You know, how often you've seen like a really cool website or a cool ad somewhere online and you went, wow, that's really cool. And then you, a big question mark pops into your head. What the hell do they do? So you wanna make it really clear. So your slogan should communicate the value and the result that you provide. In the descriptor, you wanna describe what you do and who you do it for. So the, the slogan is the emotional connection and the descriptor is the rational information. And they're both very, very important. Descriptors don't need to be fancy. You just need to tell people what you're doing. So here's an example. So we've got uh, a Braystone Family Wealth. Their slogan is see it, build it, live it. And the descriptor is supporting families with their wealth and retirement success. Okay, super clear, easy to remember, easy to say. So make sure that you know the difference between those two and see if you can develop one on your own. Then we've got Marquee, which is a benefits company, Vivid Ideas That Perform. And their descriptor is leading strategies for your group benefits and retirement plans. Nothing fancy. And then we got Live By, which you saw before, Live Life Your Way, Leading Well Solutions for Physicians, Business Owners, and Their Families. And you can see the colors have that kind of a medical look to it. And then we have uh, Field View at the bottom right. They have a lot of uh, clients in the agribusiness. View, plan, grow, financial strategies for you, your business, and your family. So now we you want to define your business personality. And I want you, you want to break it up into two areas, warm and strong traits. So the warm and strong traits are your promises to your clients and your team. It is the culture of your organization. The more your clients experience these consistently, the better the chance for a solid introduction to like-minded prospects. So this is where I want, we were gonna do our little exercise. So what I want you to do is if you have a pen and paper or, or some way of writing some notes, I want you to create two columns. So you're gonna have a warm column and you're going to have a strong column. Think of your business as a personality, okay? That, that your ideal clients are very, very attracted to. And you can see that words, there's a category of words that go under warm and a category of words that go under strong. Okay, also emotional and rational. Uh, emotional is the relationship, the warm. The strong is the delivery at the end or how you do business. So for an example, uh, insightful, authentic, courageous, and strong, an example, innovative, talented, big thinking. So when you are communicating with uh, your clients or you want to create some consistency within your team or you're hiring people on your team, you can say, look at this is what we're all about. We're all about being insightful, authentic, and courageous. 
when you open the door to the office or come into the office, whether it's at home or, or in the workplace, you remind yourself that these are the three things that I want to be. For the personal coach, it's confidence, focus, and freedom. So of course we want that for our clients, but we need to be that too. And the more you practice it, remind yourself, the better you get. It's almost like learning something physical, like how to do a golf swing or something uh, in, in karate, practicing a kata over and over and over again. <clears throat> and it feels like I'll never get it, but after doing it for five years, then, then it just becomes normal and natural. The organization, the karate organization I, I belong to is friendship, cooperation, and learning. And it's interesting because they're not only words, but it's how we operate. So friendship allows us to uh, prevent from hurting each other and supporting each other. Cooperation is all our requirements. And in order for us to learn from each other, we need to cooperate. And then as a result, we will keep learning ongoingly. So it's not just these words you throw out, you actually apply them into your business and all of your programs. So the warmer the ones that your clients want to, you want your clients to experience first. And then the strong is your delivery. So I'm just gonna give you a few more examples. So write down what you think might be your top warm traits and what you think your top three strong traits might be. And just only pick three. You don't want any more than six because the brain can't handle anymore. So just take a couple of minutes and write down what you think your brand personality is all about in the workplace, not at home or not on the golf course. And while you're doing that, you may find that you might be coming up with words like this, trusting, honest, approachable, professional, and that's okay. But just to let you know, if you're, if you're not doing that already, you shouldn't be an advisor. So this is what most advisors, good advisors are typically doing anyway. These are, these are the traits. Okay, I'm gonna move on a little bit. So I want you to think about that. You might need more time thinking about what some of those are. Uh, if you wanna have a conversation with me uh, at some point in a complimentary call to go a little bit deeper on that, I'm, I'm uh, absolutely available to do that with you. Uh, but don't take this lightly. This will truly impact your business for not just yourself and your clients, but also your team. And like I mentioned, just do three. Okay, don't overdo it. Just pick your top three warm and your top three strong. And these are your promises. Uh, one thing I, I actually do want to add to that. When you do develop those, you may want to come up with definitions for them as well. Because uh, your definition of insightful might be different than somebody else's. So you can Google what the definition is to get some kind of thoughts and direction. Uh, but really from your own heart, what you believe that is. And then show it to your team, maybe get some impact or your spouse or whatever, and get, uh, or your partner and get some uh, feedback from them and see what they say. Because they, sometimes people know you more than you know yourself. Okay, and then on top of that, you know, if you have a really good company name and a good brand developing, then you wanna start thinking about the words that fit. And here's an example. This is a company out of Windsor, Ontario. They are called The Works and their ideal clients are uh, in the auto industry, uh, automation and high tech. Uh, and these guys are all about strength. And uh, there's two advisors and they have a team. And so in our brand document, we have a page that has about a hundred words that relate to their brand. So you can see how these words here, I just put on a few work, gear up, success, hardworking, uh, comprehensive, assemble, build, strong. And we're able, when we come up with these words, we're able to come up with a name for their process. When they're writing articles, they or us, when we're writing articles for them, we can grab some of those words and pop it into their, into their language. Same with their website, uh, all of their social media platforms. So it's really easy to come up with creative ideas. 
But if they're not on brand, you're actually confusing your clients and you start blending in with everybody else. So you want to have that documentation where you've got some really good, solid brand words that you can always look from. And what will happen is that your the list will get longer. Uh, you'll be able to focus more on, on what you're about and articulating your value much better. Okay, and words you want to avoid. And this comes uh, feedback from some of these dealers as well. Is avoid saying that you're the best or guarantee better, you must. You, sh you should, uh, that doesn't go very well with compliance or maybe with your clients, particularly in this industry, you can't make promises like that. So just be cognitive of not using words like this or words that refer to this. These are called absolute words that you want to avoid. And then communicating across your touch points that we talked about before. Without the first strategies, all of your marketing and digital marketing will be useless. And I mentioned that already. You want to make sure you got that solid story and a good brand in place before you do anything. And also, it will help you to keep all of your touch points consistent. Again, you can see a great idea that a competitor is doing. If you try to implement it, you are going to look like different companies. I actually sat down with a company. They've been around since 1948. When I looked at their existing materials, they looked like 12 different companies and they didn't know it because they hired a web company for the website. They hired a, a graphic designer to do a brochure. They had another company for social media and 